Well, howdy, howdy, howdy. Nearly senior citizen here. Greetings, boys, girls, and all of our non-binary friends. And welcome to this, a brand new day. Yay, a brand new day. A brand new day where it's going to be largely cloudy. I was going to say overcast, and then I was going to say cloudy, and then I went, ka, 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 ka. It's going to be cloudy and overcast and gray and chilly and raining off and on. And yesterday, last night, when I went walkies, it was late. When I got back, it was almost 10 o'clock, so yay. But when I did go out, it was the threat of rain. There was, periodically, you'd feel a tiny little drop every once in a while. Just one, and only every once in a while. But past that, it was gray, overcast, chilly, windy. It was nice. I really liked it. It was good. Definitely a an improvement over being hot and muggy. So thumbs up on that. However, I have to walk to Walmart today. My right shoe that I have been mostly duct taping together, which is now mostly duct tape, uh, uh, it's bad enough. So I finally got to get some shoes. Which I can't afford to do because I need to also pay some bills, which I can't afford to do because I need to pay for my post office box this month, which I can't afford to do. So uh, it's uh, yay, but I gotta get shoes, so I gotta walk to Walmart today, which means I gotta take my umbrella and walk to Walmart, and then hopefully I'm not gonna get too wet if it rains when I'm at walkies you know, to get the stuff. If it doesn't, then that's fine. You know, definitely a good thing, not getting all wet and cold. So, yay. It happens. Life is life. Life is life. I have been dealing with... My therapist had asked me how my mood was doing, and largely, largely, I've been doing okay. But I've also been detecting a larger overall more melancholy sadness depressed sort of feeling that's been coming on not huge and overshadowing but present not on top of everything i do but there and last night when i was out walking i did a lot of thinking about sad things Coming to terms with stuff is not a, you know, checkbox sort of thing. You don't click the checkbox and then it's done. You know, it's like, you know, oh, my, my significant other died. Checkbox, I've gotten over it after X amount of time. It's done. No, it's like everything in our, in our lives and such. Things fall apart. They take more time. If you don't do things, then you need to spend more time on them later. And this is one of those times when things have just been happening in my head. And now I'm being melancholy about things like the death of my wife. I don't want to spend a lot of time talking about this one, but I want to spend a little bit of time on something because I have spent a lot of time being chewing over one thing that happened where it's like oh did the doctors not do this well could she have lived a little longer if they had done things different did they rob her of time the thing is that's from my point of view we were married for 12 years and Two years into the marriage, she had to have heart surgery, and so for the next 10 out of the, our 12 years married, she spent slowly dying in front of my eyes. For the first two years of our marriage, and before this, she had been a strong and independent person. She had been a nurse where she worked and had done such a good job. Everybody there admired her and really looked up to her for her work ethic. And she did stuff. She was heavy, but she still did things. She worked with, there's the, you know, there's the Masons. <clears throat> if you've heard of the Masons, they have the woman's side of it, Eastern Star, you know, so that the women have something to do. And one of the things for younger girls is Rainbow Girls. And she had been involved in that as a kid and was still involved in it getting older. And she was very involved in management and running things and went to conventions every year to, to learn what they were going to be doing. So she did a lot of stuff. 
and then she had heart surgery to save her life. Five years into that, she had one of her very rare breakdowns where crying, she was just telling me how hard it was to exist. That it was just hard to even live. And that was only five years into it. About a year before she finally passed, she'd had another one of those breakdowns where there was no joy in her life. I mean, there was joy. There was, she loved me, I loved her. You know, we have kids that she wanted to see them and she loved things like that. But she wasn't living for her because living was just, it was just sheer, it was pain. So she had accepted her end. She knew what she should and should not have. And she got some of those medications that she should not have while she was in the hospital the last time. And she came back on hospice, which is you're just going to get ready to go. Which is one of those things I, having loved her, had to accept her decisions. It wasn't my life. I wasn't going to make decisions for her life because I had already seen her break down and talk about how life was just pain for her. I wasn't going to do anything like, I don't want you going on hospice. How could I? How could I inflict suffering on her? So I just okayed and accepted because I had already accepted inside that it was time to let go. And she came home on hospice and four weeks later was gone. And yes, maybe the doctors could have if there was better communication. Maybe they could have kept her alive, maybe even a couple more months, but that wouldn't have been for her. That would have been for me and everyone else. And that, if I love her, how could I inflict suffering upon her? So yes, I've had to go over this and think about this the, the past couple of days and last night I've came to the full realization on that. So hopefully my subconscious is finally going to let that one after seven years go. Because even if they had done things better, it would not have been a better result for her. Also, a couple probably months back, because time slips through my fingers still, even with ADHD meds, somebody in comments had mentioned after I had been talking about many worlds and all the different universes in many worlds. One of the things that you see, especially a lot on like TikTok with this whole reality shifting stuff, is people believing that just because there's many universes, that literally anything can happen. And that's not actually something that can happen. We have universal constants in these universes. If you don't have our universal constants, we don't even know what a universe like that would be like. It wouldn't be like the one we're in, so it would have to be a universe that has the universal constants that we have. And in this sort of universe, there is nothing like magic or anything that's not straight physical stuff. We have been looking for it in science for a long time and not been able to find it. We're gonna keep looking and just because we have found no evidence doesn't mean it's not there. But right now, when we look, we see nothing. So yeah, there is no configuration of normal matter where with our DNA, which would make us us, there is no things like superpowers. There is no DNA thing that you can shoot lasers out of your eyes or grow claws out of the back of your hands that are retractable. There are no universes like that. There are no universes where there's magic. With our normal matter, that is why in my stories I make the point that there is 
a universe where there is no city and it's just endless repetitions of everything that's possible and with nothing else. But if you add other things like extra universal energies, yeah, you can have anything. And I posit in my stories that there's heat from the abandoned city heat that because it overlays the entirety of all reality, this heat that is emanating from the injured city stresses reality so things slip and slide and some energies come out of the higher energy places and they slide around and they get into the lower energy places and then these energies do things where oh look now there's superpowers now you're a kikire a being of power low level being of power but you're a being of power now so those things can happen in a very fictionalized thing. Now, also speaking about that, there are scientists, scientists, mathematicians and such that really fall behind and believe in thoroughly the many worlds hypothesis. There are other mathematicians and physicists and such that look upon it as just sheer foolishness. I occasionally watch this one science channel where she and the people that are behind it just believe it's foolishness. One of the reasons and one of the things they talk about why they think it is foolishness is math and is the universe math and what are real numbers. A real number in math is something that's like pi. It's real in that it's mathematically possible but you don't actually really see it and in pretty much 99.99 percent of cases if you need pi you don't have to go any further than 10 decimals so it's a re it's a decimal that goes on forever and does not repeat but do we see it in reality we do we actually see it see it uh, no we we don't actually see it see it. It is a mathematical possibility, but not something that you will actually find. And that is one of the things that the many worlds hypothesis math falls into, and thus for them and her, that answers the question. It is a mathematically possible thing. The math checks out. But how do you check it? And by definition, we can't travel to any of these other universes. So are they real? Be just because it's mathematically possible doesn't mean you're going to find it. So there are those mathematicians that lean heavily into it. There are those that just dismiss it all out of hand. And I, as somebody who likes to just deal with fictional concepts, I go with it. And actually, I pretty much think that, you know, since it's one of those, by definition, it doesn't matter. Uh, yeah, I believe in the whole many worlds hypothesis stuff. But remember, when I said that things can't happen that are really weird, like, you know, science, you know, the laser rays out of our fingertips and stuff like that, doesn't mean that the universes wouldn't be really weird. Remember, there are, when I speak of numbers, there's, you know, normal numbers, dinfinite and infinite. Dinfinite is just numbers that our brains process as an infinite, but are just really large. They're normal numbers. There are a infinite number of universes where it's the dinosaurs weren't wiped out by asteroids. And so there's a Saurian intelligences. And then all the variations that they would go through and the variants of their histories and the variants of everything that happens there. And as long as what you have is a kink or fetish does not violate any things that are you know, physics or math or such, you, if you can draw a line of something that can happen, if it is a non-zero chance of happening, given enough time, it will occur. So if you have a potential kink in your head, 
And you can actually say, well, this could happen. If it is a possibility, then it could. And if it could happen, could it have happened at a different time in your timeline? And if it's a possibility, then yeah, there's a timeline where that happens. So follow it through and just about every kink and fetish you can have, uh, there's a counterpart where it's everyday life. And since it's just reality, it's it can be pleasant, unpleasant, good for some, bad for others. There's It just happens. End of open of 24 hours worth of comments in my community tab. I'm going to go through and thank 20 to 25 people for having left me a comment. I'm not reading them right now. I'm just thanking you for having left a comment. If I mispronounce the username, no disrespect is intended. And even though I count American Sign Language with fingers on that hand with my depression and more, I, oh, I get lost. I haven't had 25 comments in quite some time. I mean, I get 25 comments, but I mean 25 different commenters. I haven't had more than 25 different commenters in 24 hours in a very long time. But for each and every person that does comment, thank you so very much. It is appreciated. We have Andy Cad, thumbs up and thank you. Hellboy, greatly appreciated. And uh, always suggestions are appreciated. Ice Damon, thumbs up and thank you. And Paper Bags 1, thumbs up. Confused Owl 29, good to see you back again. Thumbs up on that. Alexis Ramirez, greatly appreciated. Syed Madi, I sure hope I'm close. Thumbs up and thank you. Jimmy Deacons, thumbs up. There is a name that I cannot pronounce. I need to run everything through Google Translate and the, the everything. But thank you very much, I hope. And then there is Sherry C, greatly appreciated. James Weller, thumbs up. We have Takadon, greatly appreciated. A bizarre YouTuber, thumbs up. We have 15 Lee, greatly appreciated. There is Talge879, sure hope I'm close. Johnny K, thumbs up and thank you. And that is it. Thank you each and every one of you. You get me out of my head and into the world and dealing with real people. Thumbs up, it is appreciated. And if you could check out my various links down below, I have Twitter, Facebook, Patreon.com. And if you could become a Patreon.com patron, like one of these beautiful and awesome people, that would be beautiful and awesome. And if you'd like to help me out without sending money through the patronage, I have a PayPal link down below. I'm thinking of starting up a new GoFundMe. We shall see how that turns out. And if you'd like to help me out without sending money, I have an Amazon wish list link as well with things like cat food on it. If you could check it out, that would be very, very cool. Now, what the, I got lost. Do not feel obligated. There we are. I do not feel entitled. And if you cannot donate or you simply do not donate, I take all good wishes and I deposit them in the bank of my heart where I draw interest, so thank you very much. And if you could toss me a like, I appreciate all the positive validation <coughs> I get for my existence. Definite thumbs up, and of course, if you could hit the notification bell on the subscription button, that would be very cool. Thumbs up and thank you. Well, Hokey Smokes has stated, I got a busy day today. I got to walk a huge distance in rain. I mean, six miles round trip. It's not a huge distance. It's just I've gotten more to walking in town 4.5 miles on my daily walkies rather than the six miles which tends to stress my nerves and my back so yeah yay still though the gofefe bug is raging out of control around the world cases are worse now in the united states than they were a year ago get vaxxed wear a mask Stay away from large groups, wash your hands, try not to touch your face, be safe, be careful, please. So you take care. Have a great day today. I will see you on the flip side, and that is a definite thumbs up.